You name it, I have helped someone kill it. Before I pick up where I left off in the first half of the Advanced Weapon Guide, let me cover a few important nuggets of info. First of all, I'm only covering guns found in the BASE game of Fallout 3. That means that I'm not going to cover any weapons from the extended downloadable content or Game of the Year versions of the game. Second is that I'm covering big guns and energy weapons in this half of the guide. If you're looking for small guns, go watch the first half of the guide. Well, now that those things have been said, let's get back to it. Vengeance is the first armament in question, a unique Gatling laser that deals massive amounts of damage. This weapon can be found in the Deathclaw Sanctuary, almost immediately west of the Dickerson Tabernacle Chapel. I'm going to warn everyone watching this video right now that the Deathclaw Sanctuary is quite easily one of THE most dangerous places in the Capital Wasteland. Don't go inside unless you are prepared and fully armed, as going through to the end is no cakewalk. Now, once you're inside and you survive the dangers of the sanctuary, Vengeance is located in the southeast corner, in a pool of blood amongst bodies, skeletons, and dismembered corpses. As powerful as the Vengeance Gatling laser is, it's by no means the mother of all weapons in the game. If you don't know what could surpass Vengeance, then meet the experimental MIRV, a modified fat man that launches not one, not two, not even three, but eight mini nukes at once. In order to get this monstrous weapon, you first have to complete the unmarked freeform quest, Keller Family Refuge. This task entails finding four holotape transcripts across the wasteland so you can access a secure bunker. The first tape is found in the Hollowed Moor Cemetery, southeast of Paradise Falls and north of Big Town. The transcript is sitting on top of a podium in the chapel. The second tape is in the Grizzly Diner, which is southeast of Old Olney and north of the Temple of the Union. The transcript can be found sitting on a desk out back behind the diner. The third tape is found in an abandoned shack just west of Rockbreaker's Last Gas, northeast of Little Lamplight, and quite a bit southwest of Paradise Falls. The transcript is sitting on the workbench inside of the shack. The fourth and final tape is just north of the Anchorage War Memorial, which is almost directly east of Megaton, northwest of Rivet City, and is sitting in the middle of the Potomac River. On the northern bank of the river from the War Memorial, there is an overturned truck with a tent behind it. Inside the tent, you can find the transcript on a table. Okay, now with all four tapes in hand, you want to head to the National Guard Depot, which is on the east edge of the map, on the outskirts of the DC ruins. It's also south of Canterbury Commons. Once you're inside of the depot, you can go through the training wing section, then through the office section, and come out on the top level to throw a lever that opens the armory on the bottom level. Once inside the armory, you'll have gained access to a massive weapon supply and armor stash. You can also find the small gun bobblehead collectible here. Now, in the back of the armory, you'll find a large sealed door. With all of the Keller transcripts in hand, access the terminal and open the door. Further inside, you'll find five mini-nukes and the experimental MIRV. With the big guns out of the way, let's tackle the only kind of weapons left. Energy weapons. One of the absolute best guns that doesn't use bullets is A321's plasma rifle, which is a custom model of the normal plasma rifle. In order to get this weapon, it's important that you follow my directions closely. If you do them out of order, there's a chance you'll have a harder time finishing this quest, and as a result, some of the steps I provide may not work. First, you need to go to Rivet City and talk to Dr. Zimmer, who is located in the science lab. Are you by any chance for hire? Accept the task he has that needs to be completed, then go to the Rivet City Clinic. Talk to Dr. Preston about the related subject, and he'll give you a holotape in turn. There was a holotape that got circulated. I think I've got a copy of it. Yeah, here it is. Next, go to St. Monica's Church on the above floor and grab the holotape in the podium. Then immediately go to the floor with the Weatherly Hotel, break into Sister's room, and take the holotape off of the table inside. If you follow the steps properly, the tape in Sister's room should be titled, A Free Man, A New Man. If that wasn't the case, you'll have to go down to the market and try to pump Seagrave Holmes for info. Using this tactic, though, you'll only succeed by passing a speech check. With the info from the last tape, or from Seagrave, go to the market and head through the back door. From the platform you exit onto, jump down and into the water. 
Beneath the surface, over to the right, there's a door that goes inside of the Rivet City Bow. Once inside, on the opposite wall of the first room, there's another door. After surfacing for air, go through it, and after swimming forward a bit, there will be a doorway on your left. Go through it and up the stairs ahead. Follow the steps all the way up, and you'll be on the level of find Pinkerton, the man you're searching for. Be careful when looking around, though. The place is rigged with traps, and there are some nasty Mirelurks hanging around. When you find Pinkerton, talk to him about the work he did. Don't believe anyone's done that before. Certainly not down here. That Commonwealth tech isn't all that fancy when it comes down to it. He'll give you the access code to his computer. Look through all the files on his terminal, and they will automatically download to your Pip-Boy. With that done, go back to Rivet City, find Harkness, and speak to him about the information you found. Present him with all the evidence in your possession to prove the validity of your claims. I'll admit this is pretty convincing evidence, but it doesn't make any sense. How can this be possible? After convincing Harkness, side with him and not Zimmer. By doing so, he'll give you A321's plasma rifle. Here's a little token of my gratitude. Best weapon a man could ask for. Finally, we can tackle one of the most sought-after weapons in the entire game, the Alien Blaster. This unbelievably powerful energy weapon is found at the alien crash site, where a dead Martian and the remains of his flying saucer reside. It's located northeast of Paradise Falls and southwest of Old Olney. Once you find the crash site, you can simply pick up the alien blaster. But be careful how you use it. The alien power cells it uses as ammunition are very limited, and once you run out of them, you'll never be able to shoot this weapon again. Also, if you have the downloadable content Mothership Zeta installed, or you're playing a game of the year edition, you won't be able to just run up and grab this weapon. Simply walking up to the alien crash site will trigger the Mothership Zeta content. And you'll have to complete it before you can return to the capital wasteland to grab the alien blaster. You've been warned, so no complaints. In both parts 1 and 2, I've covered a total of 8 of the most powerful, unique weapons in the entire base game of Fallout 3. If you pick up any one of these weapons, or better yet a handful, nothing will be able to beat you. I can see you're trying to appeal to my good nature. Pity for you I don't have one.